Okay, here is another map, uh, Battle of Marne, World War I. Uh, so I've done a lot of war maps, and uh, I pretty much, you know, accumulated all these different uh, things I've learned about doing different war maps and what players like to do. Um, and this also includes, uh, you know, wave AI function, scripting, change of time of day, um, telling the player where to go in, a, in an open world feeling environment. Um, and uh, we're going to be talking about pivot points, weapons. Um, I think uh, that's pretty much a lot of stuff in the map. Uh, generic shapes. Uh, so we can start that off there with generic shapes. Um, so with more maps, I noticed a lot of players like to see like a tank. They like to see a some kind of like cool vehicle that has been built. Um, but you know, with the generic shapes and the in the budget that is allowed, um, I did unfortunately have to delete a lot of stuff that came off of this stuff. So I tried my best to make a look a, a 19, 17, 16 um, looking truck troop transport. Um, you know, put some crates and health in here for the player. Um, so let's go ahead and continue on with the map. Um, so we could talk about nature as well. Um, I would like to find a good spot where I think I, I had a, uh, a good, uh, uh, patch that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, not to say this is, isn't bad, but this is based off of like a French village. I think Battle Marne, um, there's two Battle Marnes. I was reading, um about how there was a battle where there's pretty much a town exactly like this and over the hill was just like ash, death, and fire, which you'll see, see soon. Um, but here we are. So here's a good patch. So I put these mud decals, which is pretty good. And I also have a mud, uh, you know, ground spray paint that I paint the ground with. And I like to put um, bushes and stuff like this all along this edge to kind of give it like, um, cause sometimes grass just kind of cliffs off, you know? It's not a smooth round, uh, it's not smooth like this, uh, so I try to achieve this kind of like cliff effect, um, which I think is pretty good. Um, I think I was talking before on the Batman one about destructible walls, um, and how that looks like. Uh, so here's like, you know, I try to make, you know, especially with the space allowed, I try to put like a, um, a, uh, a lot of, um, not a lot of furniture, because of the budget, but I try to put some destructible things. Everything that can be destructible should be destructible. Um, this wasn't, it looked like a good building for the time period. Same with the one that's, uh, there's a guy standing on top of right there. Um, but if anybody were sure to throw a grenade at me or some kind of uh, dynamite, um, it would surely explode these walls. Now, I want to try something. I want to see if I can survive this gunfight because I... I, uh, I really did want to keep the player here in this town, have them fight for a very long time, because I did take a lot of time to build this town. I mean, look at this river, man. Um, you know, this this maybe took like a week or something like that. And I'm trying to achieve, you know, it's growing in. This town is growing in. It's being used. If I were to turn this into a team deathmatch, i put these ladders here. Um, you know, try to make it uh, accessible, um, in a sense. Um, I think that's just... I do not know where I am. Hopefully I'm climbing up a ladder. I cannot see. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Great. Um, so, objective marker. Hopefully the players can see the objective marker. You can do scripting. Um, when you do put objective markers, that will change over time. Like you want just this one to be seen, and then eventually another one will pop up here. You can't put scripting, but you need to have a script in the beginning that turns the ones that you want off, off in the beginning. It's a little annoying, and you have to keep in mind you only have, like, uh, room for 12 different action items in your script. So if you have more than 12 waypoints, you might want to reconsider um, the path that you're leading to your player. Maybe don't point out the weapons right away. Just have it, like, there in case they discover it. It's more of, like, a find. You don't have to point it off right away. Now check out this scripting. Boom, boom. Um, and stuff explodes. There we go. Great. Trying to provide some kind of like artillery effect, you know, make the player feel like a lot of the world's, the world's moving on, um, around them and AI are, are performing functions, stuff like that. Um, so here, like I said before, here's like a really good example of, uh, the, the cliff effect that I want to achieve with the grass, with the mud. I try to make it as sharp as possible. I, uh, I didn't want to overuse this particular plant, and I will and I will get to an example in just a second. Um, as soon as I kill these guys, I just need to make sure that my guy is safe. 
there we go. Right, so give the player options. Want to see the you know the world is is bigger than them. There's there's plenty of place to go. Um, here's a good spot that I was talking about. So I use these flowers because I really like the the cliff effect. I've seen you know I played a lot of Battlefield. I've seen a, a lot of France maps. Um, it's only World War One, uh, World War Two maps I've seen. But you know they got this cliff effect in these kind of like hedgerows. Um, and I didn't want to go too hedgerow. Didn't want to make it look like Normandy or D Day or something like that. It's just some French town. Um, and so check out the shadow. I slowly put uh, the change of time and day for a good reason. Because like I said, I wanted to over this hill to look like uh, just death and, and shadow and, uh, and, the, and grime and uh, just a big fight. Um, and, which you'll see in just one moment. So the time's changing. The player has time to uh, explore. I destroyed this building. I built uh, just normal destruction objects just like you've seen before as if nothing was destroyed. Put a fire in a barrel in here right away, just destroyed. It gives it that effect that something's been going on already without the player knowing. So I love this effect. I love this kind of like, um, you know, smoke is filling the sky. We have been lingering here for a while, but hopefully at this time, um, the player has discovered um, where I'm about to go, which is right here because I did put uh, a waypoints objective markers as well as a flare. So hopefully the player can naturally feel like they're entering these trenches. Um, by the time that scripting the daytime goes through and I you know I had a L I put made my girlfriend play one of my maps just because I wanted to see her how she naturally paced through the map um, great so here's another tip that I put for you guys try and find um vantage points I mean Far Cry the campaign has always been about trying to find vantage points and cool looking spots and how to make the player feel cinematic and stuff like that so the player would immediately turn from here and see this vast um, ocean of war, basically. Um, again, I'm not using waypoints to, to point out the obvious stuff like uh, health and stuff like that. Just putting it so they enter through here. They're scripting for artillery again. One last chance for armor, body, shovels, weapons, stuff like that. Um, the rain has changed now because I think the thunder in the background gives that extra like gunfire effect. I did, uh, from, you know, just like I said before, from doing a lot of different war maps, I've learned this effect that you can do. You can put a machine gunner underneath the ground, separate them with a blood dragon door or something like that, and have them shoot at each other without hurting each other. So it's just this constant noise of gunfire um, and stuff like that just to provide that extra background. I don't feel like the war uh, ambient sound is loud enough that they have. Um, so... That's what's going on. I think they're underneath the ground somewhere over here. They're shooting each other. Um, so there should be some kind of background noise. I'm just going through. You know, add some puddles. I'm trying to make this place look gross. I put bodies everywhere. Put your bodies everywhere. Make it look like some, some stuff happened, man. Um, I love the rain effect on the puddles. That's a good effect. Uh, I, might get, I might get lit up pretty bad right now. Let's, let's see. We'll find out. I don't think I picked up all the explosives that I uh, put down originally. Oh, here we go. Yep, there we go. Great. So I wanted I put wave five to spawn at the end because I wanted the player to engage with fight. Uh, you know, have a gunfight before the um, artillery stuff just starts raining in. You know, I know people love to play war maps, but um, it's so annoying to me when there's just like an endless stream of artillery, especially when they place down like 10 mortar uh, turrets. Um, you know, it doesn't make for a good experience when the player just dies. Um, and, you know, I, I guess I've been known to make my maps like pretty easy because I want the player to succeed. I want the player to like my map, you know, as shameful as it is to say. But I also want to make it challenging. Um, here we go. Flare and a light. That, hopefully that tells the player where to go. Um, should be an AI guy standing right here using the machine gun. But I have found that um, AI will totally ignore their control zones when um, another player needs help getting up, like that red circle that you've seen. Oh, here's a tank, by the way. So again, uh, with the war what I said before, players love to see generic shapes um, being put into uh, something that actually is like... Um, that would happen in the 1917s. They have these weird looking tanks. I had to look it up, spend some time, trial and error, uh, trial and error, put the stuff together. Um, again, I use different mud decals. 
Um, I don't think I pointed that out before. This is like three or four different mud decals. So spend the time, look through. Um, can't believe these guys haven't found me yet. Um, but again, there's that tank. I can I can get a little close up on this if you'd like. Take a look at what I did. Um, you know, I pointed, pointed the guns down so it looks like, um, you know, no one's manning it and it's on fire. Uh, tire tracks, you know. Look for an explanation. Maybe the player's going to find this stuff interesting. It's on fire, but why? You know, the, the tire tracks. Okay, I see it exploded. Something happened, you know. I put a little bit of uh, stuff here to make it look like something happened at least. Um, so let's go ahead and finish off the map with another stuff. Um, I also wanted to point out, look at all this stuff. This is like beyond the map. This is out of the map. This is. I've edited the, the, the pivot points to make things look so far out in the distance that like, you could possibly go here. But of course you cannot. As the player, you cannot go here. This stuff is way off the map. I put a tr I put trees, houses, mainly just trees, rocks, way out there. So let's go ahead and end the map. That is uh, World War I, uh, Battle of Marne. Uh, so again, hopefully you enjoyed these, te these tips uh, and um, just kind of how I walked through here and reacted to my own maps. I'm thinking about uh, making this an uh, ongoing series. So if you'd like to see more, uh, just consider subscribing and liking. Uh, the video that would that would pretty much help me out, I guess, and let me know that uh, you guys do enjoy this t this type of stuff. Um, that said, uh, I'm closing out, um, and I hope to maybe interview other map editors. So please let me know if you have a map you'd like me to take a look at. Um, hopefully, we can get you on the phone or something, have some kind of interview. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Uh, but for now, uh, enjoy your night. Bye, guys.